The Battle of Lomuala was one of the first major engagements in the Western sector during the Indo-Pakistani War of 1971, fought between assaulting Pakistani forces and Indian defenders at the Indian border post of Lomuala, in the Tar Desert of Rajasthan state in India. The battle was fought between 120 Indian soldiers accompanied by four hunter-fighter aircraft and 2,000 to 3,000 Pakistani soldiers accompanied by 30 to 40 tanks. A company of the Indian Army's 23rd Battalion, Punjab Regiment, commanded by Major Kuldip Singh Champuri, was left with the choice of either attempting to hold out until reinforced, or fleeing on foot from a Pakistani mechanized infantry force. Choosing the former, Champuri ensured that all his assets were correctly deployed, and made the most use of his strong defensive position, as well as weaknesses created by errors in enemy tactics. He was also fortunate in that an Indian Air Force forward air controller was able to secure and direct aircraft in support of the post's defense until reinforcements arrived six hours later. The Pakistani commanders made several questionable decisions, including a failure of their strategic intelligence to foresee availability of Indian strike aircraft in the Longuala area, exercising operational mobility with little or no route reconnaissance, and conducting a tactical frontal assault with no engineer reconnaissance. This led to the Pakistani brigade group being left extremely vulnerable to air attack, vehicles becoming bogged in terrain not suitable for the movement of armored vehicles as they tried to deploy off a single track, these being more susceptible to enemy fire by using external fuel storage in tactical combat, attempting to execute a night attack over unfamiliar terrain, and infantry being surprised by obstacles to troop movement causing confusion and stalling the attack during the crucial hours of darkness, when the assaulting infantry still had a measure of concealment from Indian small arms and infantry support weapon fire. Chapter 1 – Background The main thrust of the Indian Army during the 1971 war was directed towards the Eastern Theater, with the Western sector envisaged as a holding operation to prevent the Pakistan Army from achieving any success that would allow the President of Pakistan, Yahya Khan, any bargaining tool to trade against the captured territories in the east. By the last week of November 1971, the Indian Army had launched offensive maneuvers at Atgram against Pakistani border posts and communications centers along the eastern border. The Mukti Bahini also launched an offensive on Jessore at this time. It was clear to Islamabad by this time that open conflict was inevitable, and that East Pakistan was indefensible in the long run. Yahya Khan chose at this point to try to protect Pakistan's integrity and to hold India by Ayub Khan's strategy, the defense of East Pakistan lies in the West. Chapter 2, Prelude Chapter 2 Section 1, The Western Sector Khan's policy made the assumption that an open conflict with India would not last long due to international pressure, and that since East Pakistan was undefendable, the war effort should be concentrated on occupying as large an area of Indian territory as possible, as a bargaining tool at the negotiating table. To this end, General Tika Khan had proposed an offensive into India, and the PAF's overriding priority was to give maximum support to this offensive. The initial plans for the offensive called for at least a temporary cover of air dominance by the PAF under which Khan's troops could conduct a lightning campaign deep into western India before digging in and consolidating their positions. To support Khan's troops, the PAF had launched preemptive strikes on the evening of 3 December that led to the formal commencement of hostilities. In the western theatre, the town of Rahim Yar Khan, close to the international border, formed a critical communication centre for Khan's forces and, situated on the Sindh, Punjab Railway, remained a vulnerable link in Khan's logistics. The fall of Rahim Yar Khan to Indian forces would cut off the rail as well as road link between Sindh and Punjab, starving Khan's forces of fuel and ammunition delivered to Karachi. Indian battle plans called for a strike across the international border with the 12th Indian Division towards Islamja through Sarkari Tala, subsequently advancing through Bagla to secure Rahim Yar Khan, which would not only destabilize the Pakistani defenses in the Punjab, but also in the Jammu and Kashmir sector, allowing the planned Indian offensive in the Chicago sector to sweep the Pakistani forces trapped there. Pakistan, which envisaged the Punjab as an operational center, 
had a strong intelligence network in the area and planned to counter its own comparatively weak strength on the ground with a preemptive strike through Kishanga towards the divisional headquarters south of Ramja. Pakistani intelligence was able to infiltrate the operations area posing as local people and pass on information. However, these sources failed to pass on information on the Long Uala post which, originally a BSF post, was now held by a company of the Punjab regiment. Long Uala formed a strategic point en route to capturing vast tracts of land and also a pivotal theatre of war in engaging India on the Western Front. Chapter 2 Section 2 Tactical Plan Pakistan's tactical plan was based on the assumption that an attack in the area would help Pakistan's 1st Armoured Division's task in the Sri Ganganagar area. Pakistan High Command also felt that it was important to protect the north-south road link which they felt was vulnerable as it was close to the border. A combined arms plan was decided upon. This involved two infantry brigades and two armoured regiments. A separate division, the 18 Division, was formed for this purpose. 18 Division operation orders required one infantry brigade with an armoured regiment to capture and establish a firm base at Longuala, a junction on the Indian road system and 51st Infantry Brigade and the 22nd Cavalry to operate beyond Longuala to capture Jesalma. The Pakistani plan was to reach Longuala, Ramja, and Jesalma. The plan was far-fetched from the start, if only because it called for a night attack to be conducted over terrain that was not preceded by route or engineer reconnaissance, and the armoured troops were therefore unaware of the ground surface that could not support rapid movement towards the objective. As the day unfolded, Longuala would stand out as one of the biggest losses in a battle for Pakistan despite overwhelming superiority before commencement of the battle, largely due to the vehicles becoming bogged down in soft sand. Chapter 2 Section 3 – Indian Defensive Planning On the Indian side, the post was held by A Company, 23rd Battalion, Punjab Regiment, led by Major Kuldip Singh Champuri, the defences occupying a high sand dune which dominated the area that was largely intractable to vehicles. The post was surrounded by a barbed wire fence of three strands. The rest of the battalion was located at Sadhuala, 17 kilometers northeast of the Longuala post. Champuri commanded an infantry company reinforced by a section each of MMGs and L-1681 mm mortar, and one jeep-mounted RCL. His two other recoilless rifle teams of the anti-tank section were under training at the battalion headquarters. Major Champuri also had under his command a four-man team of the Camel Border Security Force Division. The Long Oala post had no armoured vehicles, but artillery support was available from a battery of 170 field regiment tasked in direct support to the battalion, and 168 field regiment which had been deployed to the area in secrecy just a day earlier. The direct support battery was attached to 168 field regiment and served as its Sierra battery. Immediately after PAF strikes on Indian airfields on 3 December, Champuri dispatched a 20-man strong patrol under 2nd Lt. Dharm via Barn to Boundary Pillar 638, on the international border. This patrol was to play an important part in detecting the advances of Pakistani forces. Chapter 3, Rattle During the night of the 4th, 2nd Lt. Dharm via Barn's platoon, while on a patrol, detected noises across the border that suggested a large number of armoured vehicles approaching. These were soon confirmed by reports, from the Army's Air Observation Post aircraft flown by Major Atma Singh, in the area of a 20 km long armoured column on the track leading to the post advancing in the general direction of the Longuala post. Directing 2nd Lieutenant. Dharm Veer Barnes patrol to trail the advancing armoured column, Champuri got in touch with battalion headquarters requesting urgent reinforcements and armour and artillery support. Battalion HQ gave him the choice of staying put, and containing the attack as much as possible, or carrying out a tactical retreat of the company to Ramja, as reinforcements would not be available for at least six hours. Considering that Champuri's command had no transportation, 
and was facing a mobile enemy, he decided to maintain the defensive position of the post where his troops at least had the benefit of prepared defensive works, rather than conducting a withdrawal at night that was a far riskier option. The Pakistani forces began their attack at 12.30 am. As the offensive approached the lone outpost, Pakistani artillery opened up across the border with medium artillery guns, killing five of the ten camels from the BSF detachment. As the column of 45 tanks neared the post, Indian defenses, lacking the time to lay a prepared minefield, laid a hasty anti-tank minefield as the enemy advanced, one infantryman being killed in the process. The Indian infantry held their fire until the leading Pakistani tanks had approached to 15 to 30 meters before firing their piats. They accounted for the first two tanks on the track with their jeep-mounted 106mm M40 recoilless rifle, with one of its crew being killed during the engagement. This weapon proved quite effective because it was able to engage the thinner top armor of the Pakistani tanks from its elevated position, firing at often stationary, bogged down vehicles. In all, the post defenders claimed 12 tanks destroyed or damaged. The initial Pakistani attack stalled almost immediately when the infantry discovered the barbed wire which was unseen in the night, and interpreted it to signify a minefield. Firing for the Indian RCL crews was made easier by the flames of fires when the spare fuel tanks on the Pakistani tanks, intended to supplement their internal capacity for the advance to Jesalma, exploded, at once providing ample light for Indians located on higher ground, and creating a dense acrid smoke screen at ground level for the Pakistani infantry, adding to the confusion. Two hours were lost as Pakistani sappers were brought up, only to discover there was no minefield. However, at this time Pakistani infantry were required to make another attack, from a different direction, but in the dawn light. The Pakistani advance then attempted to surround the post, two hours later by vehicles getting off the road, but many vehicles, particularly armored personnel carriers and tanks, in trying to soften up the Indian defenders before attacking, became bogged down in the soft sand of the area surrounding the post. Throughout the engagement, Major Champuri continued to direct the supporting artillery fire. Although massively outnumbering the Indian defenders, and having surrounded them, the Pakistani troops were unable to advance over open terrain on a full moon night, under small arms and mortar fire from the outpost. This encouraged the Indians not to give up their strong defensive position, frustrating the Pakistani commanders. As dawn arrived, the Pakistan forces had still not taken the post, and were now having to do so in full daylight. In the morning, the Indian Air Force was finally able to direct some HAL HF-24 Marats and Hawker Hunter aircraft, to assist the post, they were not outfitted with night vision equipment, and so were delayed from conducting combat missions until dawn. With daylight, however, the IAF was able to operate effectively, with the strike aircraft being guided to the targets by the airborne forward air controller Major Atma Singh in Ahal Krishak. The Indian aircraft attacked the Pakistani ground troops with the 16 Matra T-10 rockets and 30mm cannon fire on each aircraft. Without support from the Pakistan Air Force, which was busy elsewhere, the tanks and other armored vehicles were easy targets for the IAF's hunters. The range of the 12.7mm anti-aircraft heavy machine guns mounted on the tanks was limited, and therefore ineffective against the Indian jets. Indian air attacks were made easier by the nature of the barren terrain. Many IF officers later described the attack as a turkey shoot signifying the lopsidedness. By noon the next day, the assault ended completely, having cost Pakistan 22 tanks claimed destroyed by aircraft fire, 12 by ground anti-tank fire, and some captured after being abandoned, with a total of 100 vehicles claimed to have been destroyed or damaged in the desert around the post. The Pakistani attack was first halted, and then Pakistani forces were forced to withdraw when Indian tanks from the division's cavalry regiment, the 20th Lancers, commanded by Colonel Bauer Guru Vakan Singh, along with the 17th Battalion, Rajputana Rifles, launched their counteroffensive to end the six-hour engagement. Longwala had proved to be one of the defining moments in the war. Chapter 4, Aftermath 
The Battle of Lomuala saw heavy Pakistani losses and few Indian casualties. Since the Indians were able to use the defenders' advantage, they managed to inflict heavy losses on the Pakistanis. Indian casualties in the battle were two soldiers along with one of their jeep-mounted recoilless rifles knocked out. Pakistani losses were 200 soldiers killed. The Pakistanis suffered the loss of 36 tanks destroyed or abandoned, and lost 500 additional vehicles. The Judicial Commission set up at the end of war recommended the commander of 18 Division, Major General Mustafa, to be tried for negligence during the war. Notwithstanding the Indian victory, there were intelligence and strategic failures on both sides. India's intelligence failed to provide warning of such a large armoured force in the Western sector. Moreover, the defending post was not heavily armed to neutralize the enemy. Finally, they did not push home the advantage by destroying the fleeing Pakistani tanks while the IAF had them on the run. They did, however destroy or capture some 36 tanks, remaining one of the largest disproportionate tank casualties for one side in a single battle after World War II. Invading Pakistan troops meanwhile, had underestimated the Longuala Post's defensive capability due to the difficulty of approach over sand, conducting the attack at night and in full moonlight, against stiff resistance encountered there from a well-prepared defensive position located on a dominant height. Attacking with virtually no air cover, they took too long to close for an assault on the position, and failed to anticipate availability of Indian close air support. Given that Pakistan's Sherman tanks and T-59 slash Type 59 Chinese tanks were slow on the Sandy Tar Desert, some military analysts have opined that the attack may have been poorly planned, and executed given the terrain. Some Pakistani tanks suffered engine failures due to overheating in trying to extricate themselves, and were abandoned. The open desert battleground provided little to no cover for the tanks and infantry from air attacks. The plan to capture Lomuala may have been good in conception, but failed due to lack of air cover. As a result, two tank regiments failed to take Lomuala. For his part, the Indian company commander, Major Kuldip Singh Champuri, was decorated with India's second highest gallantry award, the Mahavir Chakra. Several other awards were earned by members of the defending company, and the battalion's commander. On the other hand, the Pakistani divisional commander was dismissed from service. However, the commander of the Pakistani 51 Brigade who mounted the daring attack and crossed into Indian territory was later awarded Pakistan's high award of the Satara e Imtiaz. British media reported the defense of Longuala. James Hatter compared the Battle of Longuala as to Battle of Thermopylae in his article Taking on the Enemy at Longuala describing it as the deciding moment of the 1971 war. Similarly, Field Marshal R. M. Carver, the British Chief of the Imperial General Staff, visited Longuala a few weeks after the war to learn the details of the battle from Major Champuri. In 2008, the battle was the subject of disagreement, some officers of the time ascribing all the combat success to the Air Force. This led to Kuldip Singh Champuri suing for a token amount of one rupee. Chapter 5, In Popular Culture The Battle of Longuala was depicted in the 1997 Bollywood film Border, which was directed by J.P. Dutta and starred Sonny Deal as Major Kuldip Singh Champuri, Jackie Shroff as W.G. Commander M.S. Bauer, Sunil Shetty as Assistant Commandant. Pan Singh, and Akshay Khan as two Lieutenant Dharm Veer Barn. The main criticism of the movie was that it showed Indian forces being in a terrible position before any sort of help came from the Indian Air Force. The movie also exaggerates the casualties of Indian soldiers, for dramatic purposes. This was not the case in the real incident as Indian forces had defended a position on a height that commanded the area, and were able to defend it effectively due to tactical mistakes made by the Pakistani commanders. This resulted in only two soldiers being killed before combat ceased. Indian troops were later able to capture damaged or abandoned Pakistani tanks. Chapter 6 Citations and Notes